Good morning. Happy Sunday, Forest Night out in St. Louis. Wanted to share this uh, with you really, really quick. Uh, my wife actually shared this uh, video with me, uh, The Law of Attraction by Dr. Uh, Darius Daniels. Absolutely, absolutely awesome. He's actually teaching uh, from the Bible, 1 Kings uh, 10. So I highly recommend it. The reason I wanted to share this is because over the last several days, I attended a branding workshop yesterday, uh, which was really, really cool. I did that with the awesome uh, Ray Higdon, uh, uh, Stormy Daniels was on there, and quite a few other people. It was absolutely neat. Got a chance to spend Saturday morning uh, with our what we call our business owners group or flight school. And just over the last several weeks, this type of stuff has constantly come up, constantly come up, talking about excellence and influence and access. And lo and behold, uh, Dr. Darius Daniels here is going into that. And I want you to listen to this because he's talking about the relationship between King Solomon and Sheba. And I would, I would challenge you, if I've tagged you in this, take a few minutes and listen to this. I'm going to hit record and I'm going to get off of here. I'm going to just get, let the screen play. You can watch it. I'll step by and skip through the commercials. are going to jump up because it is a YouTube. I'm sharing a YouTube video. But I think you're absolutely going to dig this. If I tag you in it, it's because I love you. I care about you. And I just want this to make an impact and realize that maybe to understand, you may already know this, that you're you're being impacted in the direction. I just want to say that what you're doing and sharing into my life is making an impact. And this uh, teaching that he did this morning just re, I guess, cemented that or just reaffirmed that would be a better way to say that, reaffirmed that, that I'm in the going in the right direction. Uh, if you're one of my coaching clients or one of my friends, I tagged you in this. I, I'm tagging you because I love you. And I think this will make a big impact for you. Uh, so let me hit a screen share here and let this bad boy play. I think you're going to dig it. Like I said, I highly recommend. I'm going to get off. I'm going to get off screen here and um, let this let this play. And then I'll just skip through any of the commercials that happen to pop up. So enjoy this. It is long. It's about 58 minutes. So if you've got time to listen to the whole thing now, if not, come back later. I've also in the description up here, I've put a link to Dr. Darius's YouTube channel. You can go in and look at that if you want to do it that way. Either way, I highly recommend you check this out. I'm recording it here because I want it on my stuff, so I don't have to go look it up. So challenge you, Dr. Darius Daniels, if you happen to catch this, brother, you are awesome. You're a man of God. I truly appreciate you. You don't know me from anybody in the world, but I appreciate you. And thank you very much for this message because it made a big impact. That's why I'm sharing it today. So I'm going to hit play. family welcome to thrive man so excited to have this opportunity i'm always excited to have the opportunity uh to take god's word and to have the kind of time together with you that hopefully adds value to your life man this is listen god's word is the most reliable source of information that is in existence when it comes to how to get the best out of life it is basic instructions before leaving earth. It is the blueprint uh, to God's intention for humanity. And man, listen, I'm always excited to, to unpack it, to explore it, and to share it with you. And I'm incredibly excited about our time together on today. Hey, as always, I'm going to ask you to do a couple of things. And one that is to like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed uh, to this channel when you like it when you press that button and like the video again that's not you saying that you like me it is you saying hey i want to help get this video in front of as many feeds as possible and pre pressing that like button does it you know it's just the way the algorithm works and many of you say from time to time dr Darius, your videos just kept coming up on my feed and one day i clicked it and it added value to my life so when you press the like button, you are helping other people have an experience, hopefully, that you've had and that has hopefully blessed your life in some way. And as always, as I jump into this lesson today, I also want to encourage those of you who are going to help. You're going to be my my teaching assistants uh, tonight. And my what my teaching assistants do is when I give points and I got a lot of them tonight, six of them. As a matter of fact, so when I get points, you put those points in the chat and in the comment section because some people learn audibly and some people uh, learn visually. And when you do that, you're helping me teach others. 
Real quick, I got a question for you, my people. How many of you would say, I would love to understand, interpret, apply, and explain the Bible better? If that's you, put a one in the chat right now. If that's you, Dr. Darius, I would love to understand. I would love to interpret. I would love to apply and explain the Bible better. Well, we've been pumping this all week, and I'm just really excited about it because we got a 14-week program that we're going to be starting. I think orientation starts Monday night called Bible U that actually helps people do that. Like Bible U, like Bible University, the school of the Bible. And uh, we've never done anything like this before. I've done programs like Everyday Seminary before, but this is different. It's completely different because Everyday Seminary had a little bit of everything in it. This is literally helping you understand the Bible. Where does it come from? How is it compiled, et cetera? Then how do you interpret it? That's hermeneutics, interpret it or interpret it well you take some exegesis and some hermeneutics but interpret it properly and apply it and then explain it like how do i explain it to friends family critics and if i'm called to teach it how do i teach it in a way that makes me effective we're doing all of this in this program and uh, i'm just mentioning it because the cart closes at midnight tonight eastern standard time so if you're watching this live on wednesday night you just got a few hours to take advantage of this you can go to the web address that's on the screen, BibleU.academy, and uh, you can sign up because I think orientation starts Monday and um, we're closing everything out on tonight. But anyway, let me get into the Bible here. And we're in a series here on Wednesday nights called Embracing Excellence. And I want to talk to you from this subject today, the law of attraction. Now, when I say the law of attraction, I don't want you to make assumptions that I mean something that others mean when they use this phrase. I knew utilize, I believe in redeeming some phrases. So I knew utilizing this phrase would cause some people to think that when Dr. Darius says law of attraction, he means uh, some philosophical, ideological, cosmic, mystical mystic approach to living where things just magically happen. I, I don't I don't believe that. I believe I don't believe in powers of the universe. I believe there's a power greater than the universe that actually cre created the universe. The universe uh, exists in time and there's space and there's matter. And uh, whatever created the universe can't be made out of what the universe is made out of, right? So if, if the universe has time, space and matter, whoever created the universe, uh, had to ex has to exist outside of time, space, and matter. So to me, there's someone, it's God, who is bigger than, powerful than, more personal than the universe. And so when I talk about this law of attraction, I, I don't mean law of attraction from culture's perspective. I mean law of attraction from kingdom's perspective. And, 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 and what does that mean, Dr. Darius? Because we're in a series on excellence, and that's right. And here is one of the things that we've been attempting to articulate, that uh, excellence, ladies and gentlemen, is an expression of godliness. So when we say godliness, most people reduce godliness to goodness. Does that make sense? Most people at least, so they think when I'm living godly, that just means I'm living good. So when you have that reductionist view of godliness, then what happens is, you completely disconnect yourself from all the other expressions of God that exist. Is God good? Yes. Should we be as good as possible? Of course. But God is more than good. God is wise. So we should do what? Walk in wisdom also, right? And God is also excellent. So we should be excellent because excellence expresses godliness. And what is excellence? We define it as doing the best you can with the resources you have available. All God expects of me is to properly manage and to steward what I do have, not what I don't have. I'm going to say that again. All God expects of me is to properly manage and steward what I do have and not be consumed and overly concerned with what I don't have. And that's what excellence is. Excellence is really a commitment not to waste potential that God's given to you. Woo! Somebody put in that chat, nothing wasted, nothing wasted. Yeah, that's what excellence is. It's a commitment to say, I will not waste what God's given me because to waste what God's given me or to, to mismanage what God's given me is to say to God, I can't be trusted with your generosity. 
Did you hear what I just said? <laughs> yeah, I, watch this. I not only want to trust God, but I want God to trust me. If that's you, put me too in the chat. Yeah, I not only want to trust God, I want God to be able to trust me. I want to be able to trust me with influence. I want to be able to trust me to make an impact. I want to be able to trust me to, to make uh, income. I want, I want him to be able to trust me that I'll do the right thing the right way. I want to be the kind of person that not only trusts God, but I want to be the kind of person that God can trust. And excellence, ladies and gentlemen, is a trait. It's not the only one, but it, it is a trait that marks us as trustworthy. Think about this. Is it easy to trust someone that you know is going to have do something? I'm going to make a bold statement and say that doing a TEDx talk is going to be the most transformative and uplifting experience of your life. Come on, guys. Right. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard. It's like, uh, you, 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 I mean, but but when you trust that someone's going to do something, you're you're at ease that they're going to do something. Well, you're at ease. You're relaxed. Like if someone has demonstrated uh, a degree of excellence in a certain area, that excellence eases your anxiety, doesn't it? And ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the reasons excellence is so important. I think it's one of the most important resources that we can possess. And it increases our effectiveness. It honors God. And this is one of the reasons the enemy attacks it. Ooh, watch this. The enemy attacks our effectiveness by attacking our excellence. I said the enemy attacks our effectiveness by attacking our excellence. So excellence is essential. Excellence is important. I want to go down that rabbit trail. But what I want you to see here, it also is that excellence is attractive. What Dr. Yeah, excellence, operating in excellence is the kingdom law of attraction. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? I said operating in ex excellence is attractive. So operating in excellence is the kingdom law of attraction. An amazing example of this is in, in a book of the Bible called First Kings, First Kings chapter 10. In First Kings chapter 10, uh, Israel's under the leadership of a king named Solomon, who is dubbed and designated as the wise, one of the wisest men who ever lived, and one of the most wealthy men who one of the most wealthy men who's ever lived. And there was another governmental official named Sheba, and I won't even bother that because it's 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 so much. It's so much there. It's it's so much there, right? I, and I think that's important because even a scripture like this, I will throw this out. And these are some of the things that I'm gonna be talking about in Bible U. But first first Kings 10. So you've got Sheba, right? So this is the presence of a person of color that is about to go and visit. King Solomon, I want you to catch this now. And when you read 1 Kings 10, you'll see that Solomon's impact on her was evangelistic in nature so that by the end of her visit, she's actually blessing Solomon's God. And many suggest that she goes back and she takes the faith of Yahweh back to her people because she's been so impacted by Solomon. And so this kind of debunks the myth that some people try to use when they say that Christianity was given to people of color as a means and as a mechanism to get them to submit and to subject themselves to slavery. It's just, it's we see right here in the Old Testament, Sheba. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> So Sheba, who's a religious, excuse me, who's a civil official, not a religious official. She's a civil official, governmental leader. She hears about Solomon. So she comes to where Solomon is. And this is what 1 Kings chapter 4, uh, verse 10, chapter 4 says. I mean, chapter 10, verse 4. Slow down, Darius. Here it is. I'm excited. When the queen of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Solomon, 
and the palace that he had built and the food on his table and the seating of his servants and the attending of their servants in his robes, his cupbearers, the burnt offerings he made at the temple of the Lord. She was overwhelmed. One translation says there was no more spirit in her. Another translation says there was no more breath in her. Her breath was taken away. I want you to see this though. Come on, but let's read it again. She saw the wisdom of Solomon, the palace he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his officials, the attending of their service in their robes, his cupbearers, and the burnt offerings he made at the temple of the Lord. See, that's verse, we start at verse four, right? If, we start, if that's right, put right in the chat. We start at verse four. So verse four says, she saw all the wisdom. Y'all missed it. She saw, how do you see wisdom? I mean, I, I think you, you would say, it, it would make sense if someone said, I heard his wisdom. But how do you see wisdom? I don't know if seeing wisdom is possible. How do you see wisdom? Well, if you actually look at verses one through three, you'll see she hears wisdom. So she sits with Solomon and she hears what he's saying, right? She hears what he's saying. But then the Bible says, so she hears what she's saying. Excuse me, verse one through three says she hears what he is saying. But it doesn't say she's overwhelmed. It doesn't say her breath is taken away. It doesn't say there's no more spirit in her. But verse four says when she saw the wisdom, when she saw it and the palace he had built, the food on his tables, the seating of his service, the tending of his service in their robes, the cupbearers, the burnt offerings he made at the temple of the Lord, she was overwhelmed. Watch this. Because excellence, guys, is not revealed in your conversation. Excellence is revealed in your demonstration. Did you hear what I just said? It, see, see, his conversation reveals his intellect. Talk to me. But his demonstration reveals his excellence. And we cannot confuse being intelligent with being excellent. Verses one through three, she got some conversation. That's important. But beginning at verse four, she saw. She saw his wisdom. By what? By the palace he had built. This is a wise man to build something like this. She saw his wisdom by the food that's on his table. It's like, man, look at this. This is good food. She saw the wisdom by the seating of his officials. You see that? The order. They were ordered. Everybody was in place. She saw his wisdom by the attending servants in their robes, by the cupbearers, and by the burnt offerings he made at the temple of the Lord. He didn't just offer God anything. He didn't just worship God uh, in a way that was inconsistent with God's grandeur and God's glory. Come on, guys. What did she see? She saw his, his wisdom, but his wisdom produced excellence. That's what she saw, guys. She saw excellence. And this is what she said. The report I heard in my own country about your achievements and your wisdom is true, but I did not believe these things until I came and saw them with my own eyes. And indeed, the half was not told. The wisdom and wealth you have far exceed the report I heard. How happy your people must be. How happy are your officials who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. Now watch what Sheba says now. Hi there. It's true. J.R. Ewing made me rich. Back in 19... Praise be to the Lord, your God, who has delighted in you and placed you on the throne of Israel. Because of the Lord's eternal love for Israel, he has made you king to maintain justice and righteousness look at this guys so sheba is saying praise be your god who's delighted in you so she's praising solomon's god and then says because of god's yahweh's eternal love for israel he has made you king but that's not all y'all Verse 10 says, and she gave the king 120 talents of gold, large quantities of spices and precious stones. Never again were so many spices brought in as those the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. 
Ooh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. She gave 120 talents of gold, large quantities of spices, precious stones. Never again were so many spices brought in as the Queen of Sheba gave to Solomon. Ooh, watch this. What do you see? You see excellence, but then you see excellence attracting something. Come on here. Come on here. Watch this. Excellence, the excellence of Solomon attracted another influencer. Somebody confess this in the chat, say influencers are coming. Influences are coming. In Sheba, that, that Sheba. Sheba represents an influencer. What do I mean by that? I'm not necessarily referring to people famous. I'm referring to people great. Sheba represents someone that has the ability to actually add to you. Gosh, excellence attracts those that have the ability to add to you. And many of us have been in seasons of subtraction. Many of us have been in seasons of division where the people that are in proximity to us are people who are intentionally or unintentionally parasitic in nature and they have attached themselves to us emotionally or attached themselves to us relationally and as a consequence of that attachment we're dealing with some emotional bankruptcy because they're making withdrawals and they're not making deposits or the kind of deposits that they're making in this season were deposits you needed in the last season but now you're in a different season and God's doing a new thing. You are in a new place mentally. You're in a new place emotionally. You're in a new place spiritually. So you can't be satisfied with the old because now all these things about you are new. Somebody put Sheba's coming. I just pray that for you. I just pray that over you. May God send some people that can add to you. Now watch this. What she added to Solomon was value. It was valuables. There were talents. That's a form of currency. There are spices and there are precious stones. And I'm praying and believing that your excellence is going to attract those that can add value to you in different ways. Did y'all hear what I just said? I wonder, is there anybody that's watching that says, I need Sheba to come? I need Sheba. I'm looking, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking for those that God's going to send that can actually add because I believe or, 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 I, or I believe that God, watch this is bringing my season of subtraction to an end. This is powerful. Come on. So not only did the excellence attract an influencer, Sheba, and that represents anybody that adds value to you. And value is not always income. See, I'm not even gonna bother that. Yes, I am. Listen to me. You wanna know what is more valuable than income? If you wanna know what's more valuable than income, put yes in the chat. Yeah, here it is. In, y'all not, y'all don't wanna know. Y'all don't want to know. Influence is more, value than, more valuable than income. Do you know there are some doors that you cannot write a check to get in? You got to know somebody? Come on. Do you know, do you know what influence does? See, there's a difference. And, and this is why, man, I love this community. I love Thrive. No judgment to anybody else. I'm just articulating my admiration for this community. And so I love it. I love the feedback. I love the energy in the chat. I love your hunger. I love your openness. I love your love for God's word. I love your open mindedness. I love your practicality. I, I, I love that. But this is why, guys, th this is why as, 
as believers, as those that want to thrive, you can't be and you shouldn't be anti-influence. See, there's a difference between fame and influence. And I'm not and I don't have an issue with fame because let me give it to you this way. Jesus was famous and Jesus is famous. But Jesus was famous. So I'm not anti-fame and I'm not saying we should go after fame, but I am saying there's a difference between greatness and fame. There's a difference between, so you can be uh, famous and not great. You can be great and not famous, but you can be great and famous. Jesus had 5,000 uh, men sitting down listening to him. I mean, do y'all know what that would look like? Not counting women and children. People would literally, like he would get in a boat and go to the other side and crowds of people would literally run on the shore to get to him. So I'm not anti that. I, I don't want you to think that God's anti-fame and I'm anti-fame. I just want you to know what when I'm talking about influence, I'm not just I'm not talking about fame. I'm talking about respect. I'm talking about the ability to be able to pick up a phone and move something. I'm talking about the ability. Come on, come on here. Come on here. Come on here. Somebody, somebody put that in the chat. Say influence is coming. Influence is coming. So, so the excellence didn't just attract an influencer, the excellence attract, attracted influence. Because when Sheba went back, listen to me, she, now she had heard of Solomon. She had heard of Solomon before she came, which meant that his influence had extended beyond his own kingdom. But when she got there, she says the half hadn't even been told. <laughs> She said the stuff that I that I just witnessed compared to the stuff I heard, she said the half hadn't even been told. And what do you think she did when she got back to her country? She told it. So his influence expanded. Come on. And we need that kind of influence expanded. Joining us now is Bob Proctor, New York Times bestselling author, lecturer, and counselor. I am here today with Bob. But excellence increased the influence. I'm not going to bother this. It wasn't his gift, it was his excellence. I bothered it, didn't I? It wasn't his gift. It was the excellence. Are y'all ready for this? Can I talk to you straight? I know we're not in a challenge this week, so I'm not coaching. I'm not mentoring. I'm teaching you. But can I just teach? Can I just teach it straight tonight at, at Thrive? Can we just, can I just, can I just go there? There are some people that are gifted, but their gift isn't as effective because they haven't married it with excellence. Gift makes room before you and brings you before great men. But it is excellence that keeps you before great men. So the excellence drew influence and influencer, but the excellence also drew influence. And then the excellence drew income. Now, if anybody in the world did not need any more resources, Solomon was one. He was already well. She literally, in verse 7, she brags about Solomon's wisdom and his wealth. So she's aware that he is already an economically independent leader. Like, she's aware of that. Yet at the same time, she still invests heavily into him. Because I want y'all to see this. If like if anyone didn't need it, he didn't need it. But excellence attracts increase. Somebody put increase in the chat. Excellence attracts it. Even in stocks, guys, 
people are more prone to invest in things in companies that are going to do well. I know there are some other variations because we all, you know, you always have people with technical, but technically, Pastor, not really. Y'all understand my point. Influencers, influence and increase. It came not because something magical happened in the universe, not because I, I just manifested it. It's, it's, it's a spiritual law. It's a, it's a kingdom law, right? It's, it's like sowing and reaping, like the kingdom operates according to principles, so, sowing and reaping. Uh, if uh, um, So I give to get. I If I want to go up, I go down. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. So in the kingdom, the way to get is to give. In the kingdom, the way to go up is, is to go down. So uh, in the kingdom, the way to be great is not to try to be great. In the kingdom, the way to be great is to be a servant. So it's this same principle here, guys. It's a kingdom. It's a principle. So it's not just magic. Ooh, I just, no. Excellence is attractive. And this is the way the enemy wants to inhibit us from experiencing some of the things that God wants us to experience, ladies and gentlemen. He tries to stop influencers from getting to us and stop our influence from expanding and stop us from experiencing increase. And one of the ways in which he does that family is by stopping us from operating in excellence because he knows excellence is actually what attracts those things. Let me drink my water. How many even right now are making a decision? I'm getting ready to take my excellence to the next level. If that's you, put me, put me, me. I'm going to another level. Why? Because I see that this is not just some accessory. This is a necessity. I see it. I see it's, watch this. You can see, okay, okay. You can see by, you can see the importance of an area just by looking at the intensity of the enemy's attack. That the intensity, I'm saying, the intensity of the enemy's attack is an indication of the importance of that area because he attacks most aggressively the area that he is most afraid of us getting together. And he's saying, all right, they're godly in their character. They're managing their morality, they're living with Christian ethics. So I can't get them there. They are prayed up. So I can't get them there. They're, they're consistently engaging in worship. I can't get them there. They're, they're constantly submitting their mind to the word of God. So their mind is being renewed. So the enemy is like, I can't get them there. So how can I stop them? How can I stifle them? How can I inhibit them from actualizing the potential that's been put on the inside of them? How can I keep them from experiencing the fullness of what God originally intended for them to experience? He says, so I can't get them in their morals. I can't get them in their mind. They're solid in their marriage. I can't get them there. But you know where I can get them? I can get them in their excellence. So they will be moral. They will be married. They will be um, prayed up. They will be filled with the word and still stuff. Because for y'all better come get me. I'm going to talk about this next week when I talk about the keys. I got the keys, keys, keys. There are some doors that only open with a certain key. Every key. Boy, if we were in church, I said every key doesn't work on every door. Certain doors require certain keys. And some keys or some doors require a key called excellence. Morality is important. Marriage is important. Wisdom is important. Spiritual disciplines are important. Studying the word is important. But some doors only open with a key called excellence. And we all know people that are spiritual that aren't excellent. Now, remember, excellence isn't opulence. I'm not even talking about opulence, right? Opulence referring to like ex excessiveness. Like that's not excellence. I'm, I'm, excellence is doing the best you can with the resources you have available, right? And I think we all know people, can I keep it real? If I can keep it real, say keep it real. Come on. 
I think we all know people who can call down fire from heaven, but you wouldn't want to sit in their car. Say, you just prayed heaven down, but I'm scared there's a demon in this car. This car is so junky. Y'all told me I could keep it real. <laughs> I'm not talking about cars. I'm not being trite here talking about cars, but I do know how you do most things or how you, or how you do anything can be how you do everything. Did you know that you can make a full-time income from YouTube without ever trying to grow your own channel? It's But we get ready to take our excellence to the next, because that's the law of attraction. So Dr. Darius, what did Sheba see? There are six things that she saw in her experience with Solomon that were excellent. And I want to know, do you want to know what those six things are? Because I think if we want Sheba influencers, if we want expanded influence, if we want increase, we need to model what Sheba saw, right? So what are the six things that she saw that were excellent? I'm going to give them to you really quickly for my note takers. Here's the first one. We see it. It says that she saw, verse four, she saw all the wisdom of Solomon. Excellence in wisdom. Come on, guys. Excellence in wisdom. What does it mean? What, what, what does that mean there? Does that mean that he knew everything? No, but he knew his thing. And you got a thing. But do you know your thing? And I don't know, and, and I don't know if this is the case. Um, you, you know, I, I, I don't know if this is just an issue generationally or if it is what Paul calls the spirit of this age, if it's, if it's just a trend of this area, era and it's transgenerational. But there seems to be this desire, right, for performance. before preparation. Does that make sense? It's, it's like seems to be this desire for people to say, hey, hey I want to perform before they're prepared. It's like, I want to preach, but I hadn't read my Bible. I, I want to I wanna sing, but I hadn't practiced my notes. I want to I wanna lead other people, but I can't lead my life. There's this, and, and God, God has a process. And, and what happens is when people skip the process, they don't have wisdom in their thing. So Solomon didn't know everything, but he knew his thing. I hope that's making sense, guys. So if you do numbers, no numbers. If you do hair, no hair. If you do leadership, no leadership. If you do speaking, no speaking. If you do wellness, no wellness. If you do business, no, like know your thing. Right? Have you ever? <laughs> I don't know. It could be something that's going on with you personally. It could have been something that's going on, let's say maybe with a car or something. But like, have you ever, like you, have you ever gone somewhere to get you or something else service? And then someone's talking and you start getting concerned. You're like, I don't know if they... I don't know a lot about this. But I don't know if they know what they're talking about. It's like you listen to them, you like, now I know I don't know. I don't think they know they don't know. I want to know my thing. Excellence in wisdom. And this is one of the things that I think that the social media space has done, guys. It is given, you know, hey, it's given people an opportunity to express their minds and their perspectives, and but it is exposed a wisdom deficit. Have you ever uh, been in a social media space and you've seen someone like post something 
and then they put something in the caption and then you go down in the comments. And have you ever read any of the comments and like scratch your head and say it now? How did you get that from that post? Like, I, I <laughs> like, did you not read the caption? Like, how did you, how, how did you get that? It's because we live in an era where there is obsession with performance and not preparation. People want to do great things before they get good. They want to be known with little knowledge. I believe you should read a book before you write one. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm doing this kind of teaching on a Wednesday night. I guess this is the way we're being led up. This, this is, I'm typically only go this hard with people that want me to and, you know, in mentorship groups and stuff like that. But listen, I, I think you should read a book before you write one. I, okay. Wisdom. Number two, I'm, I'm out of time. Worship. It says she saw the burnt offerings that he made at the temple of the Lord. So that's an expression of worship, right? Those sacrifices. That is Solomon's way of worshiping them. But she saw he took worship seriously. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. He didn't allow what he had to cause him to be distracted from who God was. And so there's there's excellence. And so when I talk about worship, I don't want you to think about I don't want you to just reduce that to the modern equivalent of lifting your hands in a building. I want you to wrap your head around the prioritizing the pre up. Uh, 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 prioritizing the preeminence of God in your life. God, you are preeminent. You are supreme. You are above all. And I treat you that way. I, tr I, I treat you like there's nobody like you. Did you hear what I just said? Amen. I, I, you know, there are times where God gets, and I use this term anthropomorphically, which means, uh, you know, and anthropology humans, it just means that I'm using a human term to and I'm a human adjective and I'm, a, and I'm applying it to God, even though it doesn't necessarily apply because God isn't human, but it does help us understand a point that the communicator is trying to make. So it's anthropomorphic. And so the point that I'm making is, is that I believe that God is agitated. The scriptures seem to suggest this from time to time with the inconsistency uh, of people's lips and their life. In Malachi 1, he says, somewhere around verse 6, 7, he said, if I'm your father, where my honor? He says, you're doing all that talking. You're doing all that talking, saying nobody like me. He was like, you're not treating me that way. I'll never leave. Or, God, you'll never leave and forsake me. He's right. He's right. People will. People you love will. I won't. Are you treating them better than me? Come on, excellence in worship, the way I, I live a God first lifestyle. So you wanna know where to invest a thousand dollars right now? Well, forget about stocks, real estate or cryptocurrency. Attractive, number three, excellence in work. I, I'm not even gonna bother that. Yes, you are but just a little bit. <laughs> she saw the way the officials work. He's like, man, they do what they do well. They don't have to do it. They don't have to do it out of spite. Oh, they don't let spite cause them to lower their standard. They do it excellence. They do it excellently because that's who they are. I was having a conversation with my wife not too long ago, and we were talking about just this idea of generosity, and not just like generosity. We would say that not just financially, but 
we lead churches and we lead companies and we lead. And so we're just talking about, and we got family and friends, whatever. So we're just talking about this whole idea of, um, of, of, of generosity. And, you know, I just thought, I was like, Hey, we need to be generous people, period. Because that's the standard we set for ourselves. And that standard should not be lowered if others don't appreciate it or feel entitled to it. So excellence, I believe, for the king, for the kingdom of believers should be the same way. That this is, my, this is my standard. God has standards that he holds himself to regardless of what happens with you and me. And that attracts guys. Number four. I hope y'all ready for this one. It says she saw, verse four, she saw all of wisdom of Solomon, the palace he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his servants, the, uh, the seating of his officials, the attending servants in their robes. Uh-oh, for appearance, excellence in appearance. Now, I'm not talking about cultural beauty standards. I'm not talking about vanity. I'm not talking about this unhealthy obsession with perfection. I'm not talking about Western um, beauty standards. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about, I am talking about though, recognizing that my appearance is a nonverbal communicator, that it does say something, that it speaks. <laughs> That, that it speaks. So uh, again, I'm not I'm not talking about vain cultural stuff. I'm talking about a standard that a person has because they realize a man does look at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance. Five. What is she? Number five. What else does she say? In verse eight, she says, "How happy your people must be. How happy your officials are." So what's number five? Attitude. Somebody put uh-oh in the chat. Yeah, excellence in an attitude. Like there can be excellence in appearance and lack of excellence in attitude. I'm trying to find a nice way to say this. Um, <laughs> there are times where we aren't challenged to deal with our attitude because we haven't come across a Sheba that don't have to take it. I hope this is helping us tonight. See, Sheba has options. Sheba, Sheba, Sheba doesn't have to take that. And so there are times we say we want Sheba, but don't want to make adjustments for people who have options. I need every sister that's watching this to put in the chat. God will give me options. Put that in the chat. So it means that you don't, and you shouldn't subject yourselves to unexcellent attitudes, nor should you have that expectation of others. I'm done. Here's number six, actions. Actions. She says, man, not, all, not only are these people working excellent, I mean, they are acting accurately. It's like they, 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 they know what they're doing. They perfected, they're not just working, you know, they're, they're not just excellent in their work ethic, right? So I talked about work. They're not just excellent in their work ethic. They're excellent in the work that they're doing. You can tell that they put work in. You can, you can tell that they, that they work on that craft. You can... You can tell that, that they put time in. You can tell that they practice to get better. 
in family, if we'll be excellent in wisdom, if we'll be excellent in worship, if we'll be excellent in work, if we'll be excellent in our appearance, if we'll be excellent in our attitude, if we'll be excellent in our actions, we will see God do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. And I want you to receive this teaching tonight or whenever you are watching this, if you're watching it later, I want you to receive this teaching as God's love letter to you. I don't want you to receive it as condemnation. I want you to receive it as a challenge. And that challenge should be seen. God's challenges are your compliments. God's challenges are your, God, God's challenges are his compliments rather. So when God challenges you to do something, he's doing so because he knows you got the, cap, the, the, the capacity and the capability to actually do it. So the challenge is a compliment. And so he's saying there's more in you and I put this message on Darius's heart because this is the season. I need you to reach in there and pull it out. That you've got to a season in your life and in your life's assignment where excellence now is a necessity. And I want you to hear this, guys. God tells you to build the ark before it rains. Some of you are in the season right now. It's raining and you got to build the ark. But for some of you, rain, blessing is coming and you need to build the ark, the infrastructure of your life. Now, several years ago, God was just on me about discipline, discipline, discipline. And I was one of the most disciplined people that I knew. And I could not understand why God kept dealing with me in that area. But he knew I was going to get to a season of life where in order to faithfully manage what he would call me to manage and to, and to steward it well, he knew that the level of discipline I had for where I was, was not the level of discipline I would need where I was going. And so if God's talking to you about this in your present, it's because your future demands it. You should be excited. This You should receive this as prophetic. You should, you should be ecstatic, enthusiastic, like God must be getting ready to do something significant for me. Want to have a side hustle bringing you an additional income stream, but you don't want to have to build websites or funnels or create video because of how this word is hitting me. <laughs> Put some fire in that chat for that family. My gosh. My gosh. You know, we talked about this idea earlier of worship and it not just being the lifting of our hands, but the, the devoting of a life, the expressing of worth. And uh, each Wednesday as we do this, uh, or whenever you watch it, we pause and we give people an opportunity to say, man, God, your word, I want to worship you for your word. I want to express worth, not just, not just by the fruit of my lips, which is important, saying, God, thank you for this, but also through the work of my hands, the, the sowing of seed. Um, honor, I want, God, I want to honor you with my substance and to say thank you because I value your word above all other words. And I just want to give an offering tonight, God, or for some of you, um, whenever you watch this, I just want to give, Lord, to just say thank you for this. And I want to sow God into this ministry, this teaching ministry that you are using to add value to my life. Lord Third is on the screen. Thank you in advance. So many of you, um, you know, email and put in comments how the ministry is adding value to your life. And we just believe God's given us a, um, and we just feel like God's given us a, and I, I don't mean it's like in terms of fame, I'm talking about in terms of impact, like a global um, global mandate. Um, I, we really believe that. I got a prophetic word years ago, probably almost 10 years ago, probably more than that, that I'm still holding on to. The vision's yet for an appointed time. And it talked about, it was a prophetic word about influence and the influence globally being greater than the influence domestically. And uh, we just believe God's given us that. So thank you in advance for your generosity. And one more time for your mind, before we get out of here, I wanna pray us out. If you're serious, not curious about understanding, interpreting, applying, and explaining the Bible better, I've got a 14 week program that I'm doing called Bible U. Now this program was actually inside my inner circle and inside my transformational coaching program. 
But at the end of the challenge, we had so the Unleash Your Calling challenge, if you know what that is, don't worry about it. But we had so many people who say, I'm not ready or interested in the inner circle. I am not ready or interested in your certification program on culture and speaking and training, but I am interested in that Bible you. Can I just have that? And so my team and I pivoted and they literally, you know, created a, a space for you to be able to get that. And, uh, but the cart's literally gonna be closing at 12 midnight tonight because they've got to get everything ready, everybody situated because register, I mean, orientation starts Monday for this. So uh, for those of you who are gonna take advantage of it, Lord Thurs coming on the screen for you to do just that. All right, family, I want to pray you out. And uh, I, I can't wait to next week. We, <laughs> we're coming back with uh, lesson four in this Embracing Excellence series. It's our season for excellence. So Father, thank you for this incredible community that you've given us. And I just pray for the grace to take the word and to apply it and to implement it in our life. And I just pray for fruit to be demonstrated in the lives of your people as a result of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, y'all. Amen, 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 amen. So I appreciate you hanging out with me. I know this was a little bit longer than normal, but if you got a chance to plug into this, I highly recommend. This may or may not be the right message for you right now in your life, but it was, a, it was the right message for me based on everything that's going on in my life. It's things that happen understanding and my wife pointing this out to me and me being a great husband of being able to listen to her and her understanding where I'm at, what I'm looking to do is that my goal is if you're in my life, if you're one of the leaders in my life, my goal is to step up and bring more excellence uh, into our sphere of relationship. It's also to impact you and grow you. And as I always say, this is taking me to another level. So it's really time for me to up level my game, take it to the next level, work on my excellence, work on my influence and understand that my goal, my goal, my goal is to impact other people's lives and help you make a change, help you find that one thing, that one thing that's going to take you to the next level. So as I always close, I love you. I appreciate you. Jesus loves you. There's absolutely nothing you can do about that. I'm on a mission to have no more empty refrigerators, make an extreme impact and be an equity creator and a life changer. I truly hope that you find excellence and influence that will give you access to take you to the next level. Have a great Sunday. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.